Hello there. Today our story is about taking antiques and collectibles out of China. That will be our story. But first I'm going to show you a Japanese box. It's very a beautiful box, so I wanted to show it to you. It's got a blue tile on the top and uh, the door even has a little blue tile on it. It's a beautiful Japanese box, probably from the late 1990s just a beautiful piece but again our story today is about if you happen to go to China it's a big deal on how you're allowed to take out antiques and collectibles see China doesn't want the so-called national treasures to leave the country so okay here's what here, see this seal here this is called a customs permission seal if you do not have this seal on your art or your antiques, there's a good chance it's not going to get through customs at the airport. Now, a lot of people don't know. See, here's another one. So I'm going to show you a few antiques that were allowed to come out of China. What that means is this is not a national treasure, this piece. And the customs official puts a seal on there. And so when you go through the airport, you're allowed to bring it home. Now, I do remember a guy a long time ago, a friend of mine, tried to get some cheap painting, probably tried to bring some cheap painting back to America. And the customs officials at the airport confiscated the painting. It was nothing special, but apparently it did not have the seal on it. So if you're going to buy anything in China, you've got to make sure it has the seal. Now, here we have an antique lunch box Chinese lunch box a lot of people call it a wedding box now see the seal there apparently this is not a national treasure so the customs official there he goes he puts his little wax seal on there and with that seal you can just go right through customs at the airport now here's the part you may not understand if you don't have that seal on there the government ends up with the piece of art or the antique. The customs officials, they just take it. Now here we got a nice antique Celadon pot. It's an antique, really nice pot here. Oh, and I almost forgot. Well, you're probably thinking, well, how do you get that seal on there? You have to make an appointment with the customs official. And you make the appointment, then he comes to your house or your hotel or your apartment. Oh, here's a nice blue and white uh, ginger jar, and it's got the remnants of a seal. You see, not the whole seal is not there, but part of the seal is still there. Um, so they, these pieces were allowed to come out of China. But again, you have to make an appointment with the customs official. He comes to your place of residency, wherever you're at, hotel and uh, room, apartment, and he goes through the whole procedure. He'll put a seal on there. If not, then the government ends up taking the piece. Okay, maybe I should clarify something here. Now, these antiques here came from a town called Shanghai. Now, the people lived in Shanghai for seven years, and they collected a bunch of stuff. So when I say they, they made an appointment with a customs official, they did, and he came over to their house, and he put their seal on there. But the situation will be the same. If you, as a collector, go to Shanghai and you are going to be in a hotel room for two weeks, and you're going around town buying antiques and artwork, and you spent like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on these antiques, and you've got them in your hotel room, you still have to make an appointment with the customs official, and hopefully he'll come to your hotel room. But hey, this is a communist country, a quasi-communist uh, country trying to go into capitalism. Is there any guarantee that he's going to show up? before you're, uh, you have to go to the airport? I don't know for sure, but these are issues you really have to take in mind if you're gonna to go to China and go on an antique buying spree and you're paying 10, 20, $30,000 for this stuff, you'd better get your seal before you end up going to the airport. Good luck.